Hey there, it's Seb Fry here with another exciting episode of It's a Seb Show. And today I want to talk about another question which I get asked very frequently, and that is, how much is it going to cost me to sell my Bay Area home? Well, that is a very good question. And when we say, what's it going to cost me to sell my home? What that really means is, how much commission am I going to have to pay a real estate agent? Now, before I go on and on, let me just say this, which is very important. There is no standard commission. Commissions are always negotiable, even though it may be that there's an average or a typical commission. It's not because there's any collusion between firms which are setting commissions, right? So there's no price fixing. None of that is going on. However, I will say that based on my own investigation into data from our multiple listing service, I have determined that, in fact, there is one commission which is charged more than any other commission. And that is what I'm going to tell you about right here, right now, so that you know what that commission is. Now, how do I, how did I calculate that? So when you look on the MLS, if you're a realtor, and uh, I think on some MLS systems, you can even see if you're uh, just a regular consumer, it says what the buyer's compensation is, right? So like when you sell a house, there's like total compensation, and then it will say how much a cooperating broker, if any, is going to be paid. And so normally, usually just sort of like, you know, as customary, although it's not always the case, right? It doesn't have to be this way, but customarily, uh, the buyer's agent is paid the same amount as the listing agent, right? It's split 50-50, right? So if you look at the buyer's agent commission, you have kind of an idea what the listing agent's commission is going to be, although it's not always the case, right? Okay, so just let me just say that, right? But, you know, if you have a big enough data set, right, you can kind of figure out like what an average is, right? You know, roughly, approximately, okay? All right, but before I get into what my research actually told me, let me just say that I commiserate with you, dear Bay Area homeowner, because you're saying, hey, listen, uh, I'm paying this, uh, you know, these big bucks for a commission. And um, I'm not sure that I'm really going to get the value that I want or expect or need or deserve out of that big real estate commission. And I totally understand that. And I totally agree with you. And it is kind of surprising how Almost every realtor is paid almost the exact same amount of money, at least in my area, according to my research that I did. So, uh, but let me just sort of break it down for you, if I could, like this way. Let's just say that you uh, hired somebody to dig a ditch, right? And this person has uh, never dug a ditch before, or maybe just a couple of ditches, and uh, they're not really exactly an expert ditch digger. Uh, but uh, they happen to know that the going rate for like a ditch of this size is like, um, say, $5,000, right? So they go to you and they say, hey, I'm going to dig this ditch for you. I'm going to charge you five grand, which, you know, I think is pretty much what anybody's going to charge you to dig this ditch. But the thing is, they're brand new at digging ditches. They haven't really dug that many ditches before. So maybe they're going to take longer to get it done. Maybe they're going to make some mistakes along the way. And maybe the final product is not going to be as good a ditch as you would get from, say, this ditch digger who's been uh, in business for 10 or 20 years. So you would think if you've done something for 10 or 20 years, that you probably got pretty good at it, right? You might be faster than the person who is uh, you know, newer to the ditch digging business. Uh, you might be more accurate, right? You might be more careful. You might be more precise. You might not have many mistakes that need to be cleaned up. You might uh, do it faster and in the end get a better result because you've been doing it a while, right? That makes sense, right? So is that same thing not true for realtors or for doctors or for lawyers or for whatever, right? I mean, I I'm going to tell you that, yes, that is definitely the case, right? So if that's the case, why are you going to pay a brand new ditch digger the same as you would pay a pro ditch digger, right? The answer is you wouldn't, right? You wouldn't do that. You would basically go this, you know, this the new ditch digger, you would look at him and you would say, hey, listen, uh, I see you haven't been in business very long. I don't see very many, you know, reviews for you online. Uh, maybe you really uh, aren't that great of a ditch digger. And why would I go with you as opposed to this other ditch digger over here who is really, really good, right? It has like, you know, a lot of favorable reviews. And like, I see he's been in business a long time. And, you know, I've, I've been referred to him by like a few people, right? And they say, this is the guy to go with. Why, why would you use that other guy? And there is a reason why you might go with the other guy. I mean, there's many reasons why maybe you just like him. He seems like a nice person, uh, or maybe he was referred to you by somebody, right? But you would have an expectation that that ditch digger should charge less. And so I would put it to you that in that case, you would ask that ditch digger, hey, 
you know, and I don't want to pay you five grand because like this pro guy over here who's been doing it for 10 or 20 years, totally renowned dish digger, he charges five grand. I'm going to pay you two and a half thousand dollars. Now, does that seem fair? Now, you probably would have no compunction about doing that whatsoever, right? You, that's fair, right? Exactly, right? Why not, right? But the strange thing is that's not what happens with real estate commissions because when I did my research, and this was like this is a few months ago, this was like a window in time, right? In a certain geographic area, right? I analyzed several hundred sales um, in this area, in this window of time. And uh, what I saw was there was a remarkable consistency in the commissions that were paid to buyer's agents. And, you know, I didn't actually uh, like look it up right now to like refresh my memory to see what that was. But I want to say it was like 93 or like 98% of the time, it was like a really big number. The buyer's agents were paid the exact same commission. And now if we uh, if we proceed from the assumption that the listing agent is being paid the exact same amount as the buyer's agent, which is not always the case, but, you know, it usually is. I have a pretty good idea what most people are being charged to sell a home. It's not just anecdotal. It's not just, you know, whispers I've heard or rumors or gossip or anything. I have actual data that shows it to me, right? So why is it? Why is it? Why are sellers paying almost the same amount of money to sell a home, regardless of the experience of the agents that are involved in the transaction? And that obviously must create a lot of anxiety in the in the you know uh, consumer space, right? People are saying like, "What really good value am I getting? Like, why do I have to pay this? Like, no matter what." So, what I would suggest to you, dear homeowner, is if you are thinking about selling your home, when you talk to your realtor or when you're interviewing realtors, just say this: "Say, hey, will you lower your commission?" And if they agree to lower their commission, you know what? You don't want that realtor. That's what I would tell you. If they are going to cut their rate. It's probably not a good realtor. In fact, that's a cut rate realtor. And you probably don't want to trust the sale of your biggest asset, probably your most prized possession, the most valuable thing, the thing that means the most to you of any other thing that you own. You probably don't want to trust that to a cut rate professional, right? I wouldn't. Why would you? I mean, like if you're going to get like surgery, are you going to go to Stanford Medicine or are you going to go to like, you know, uh, you know, a Tijuana, you know, OR? I mean, like, what are you going to do, right? You're going to go to Stanford. Obviously, you're not going to go for the cut rate when it's something really, really important. So I would say to you, dear Bay Area homeowner, if that's the case, you don't want to pick that agent who is going to basically say you, tell you right there very plainly, I'm actually not that good. <clears throat> My services are not very much in demand. I don't really have very much experience and I got really nothing to lose because I have nothing else going on. So yeah, I will take that cut rate commission. So if you find an agent like that who agrees to cut their commission, you need to uh, get rid of that agent. And here's the thing. I'll bet you that if you interviewed like, I don't know, four or five or two or three or whatever agents, you're going to find some who are going to agree to do it. And I'm telling you, you should reject that agent right away. In fact, you might want to consider uh, hiring the realtor who charges more than whatever the going rate happens to be in your area. Because if there's an agent who charges more, that agent probably can do so because he has enough business. He's okay with losing business at that lower standard rate. And if he's okay with that, it means because he does a good enough job that he has enough people referring business to him or her that uh, he doesn't need to work at a lower rate, which means that's probably a pretty good realtor. Now that I've made you sit through all of this, I will tell you what I think it costs to hire a realtor in the San Francisco Bay Area here in uh, the first half of 2021. Are you ready? Okay, so I analyzed hundreds of sales, hundreds of them. And what I found, I put them in a big spreadsheet. I you know, sorted them by commission rate. What I found was that in 93 or 98, whatever, well over 90% of uh, transactions, the buyer's agent was paid 2.5%. Now, of course, I'm not saying that this is a standard or a fixed or anything. This happens to be in my research. I'm not telling you what I charge, but I'm telling you that's what it looked like from my analysis of the actual data, buyer's agents, 2.5%. And if the listing agent, the seller's agent, is getting the same as the buyer's agent, why that would be 5%. So if you are selling a million dollar property, why that's $50,000. And if you are selling a $2 million property, why that is $100,000, which sounds like a lot of money. I get it because, you know, a time like this when houses are selling like hotcakes, you might question the value of paying that and I'm happy to discuss the value of having a, a you know high priced realtor in there. Uh, I do think that uh, a good agent is definitely worth that. And I'm happy to explain that to you. 
in another episode of It's a Seb Show, but this one has already gone on far too long. So I'm going to wrap up this episode of It's a Seb Show, but I do want to thank you for watching. And uh, you know what? I, I would love to hear what you think about this. So if you wouldn't mind giving me a comment, that would be stellar. I would also love a thumbs up. It would be totally awesome. And if you would give this a share, share this to somebody that you know who's grappling with these you know, exorbitant realtor commissions, I would appreciate it and they would probably appreciate it too. And this is a totally radical thing, right? So don't like, you know, jump out the screen at me. But if you would hit the subscribe button right there on my YouTube channel, that would be super awesome as well. All right. Well, that is it for this episode of It's a Seb Show. Thank you so very much for watching. But don't worry. It's okay. Calm down. I'll have another episode up again before too long.